Uh, Mount Dodger Still Comics, DC News of the Week. Uh, oh, not a lot. Mama. Still waiting for anything to really happen. <laughs> Uh, it's okay. okay, they're cooking. Yeah, they're just they're cooking. They're in the kitchen. Uh, they're studios. in the kitchen, baby. Uh, James Gunn has set the record straight on the Batman franchise. Um, there was rumors it was being scrapped, and then there was rumors they were going to fill it back to back, two and three, and now who knows? So uh, while James Gunn has said out of continuity projects will continue to be made, it's still strange to think that the Batman sequel is going to compete with the Brave and the Bold, a Batman and Robin led project featuring the DCU's new Dark Knight. Uh, there's no reason why two versions of Bruce Wayne can't coexist on the screen at the same time, of course, though comparisons will inevitably of course comparisons will be inevitable. And the pressure is going to be on Andy Machete to deliver a movie that's as good, if not better, than what Matt Reeves did with the Batman twenty twenty two. Um if you're looking for a movie better than the Batman, he's this guy's not he's not the guy to do it. Uh earlier this week Gun debunked a pretty exciting rumor about the Batman two and three being shot back to back. Um, responding to a fan who just asked about that on social media, Gunn made clear Reeves' plans for the Batman franchise have not been cancelled. Um, recently a website claimed Gunn has no power over the Batman 2. To that he said, bullshit. All new DC studios are, all new DC films are under DC studios. That makes sense, though that did lead to some concerns about potential creative differences given Reeves' very specific vision for the character. Uh, at this stage, we don't know what sort of studio boss Gunn is going to be and exactly how much freedom he'll give his creatives uh, who make DC projects under that are, who, which aren't going to fall under the DCU umbrella. Uh, yeah, so Batman 2 is scheduled to arrive in two years, October 2nd, 2026. Um, if it's, kind of, yes. it's going to take that long to come out, I'm not sure there'll be a third one. Because then you're looking at I mean, if you're not shooting it back to back, 20, 2030 for your Batman three, and then you're five years into the DC EU Gods and Monsters chapter, I guess. I don't know. I'm not sure. I'm not sure it goes past number two. Well, I think they want to try to space out a bit with animated stuff, if I'm not mistaken. Oh, so, uh, speaking of I mean, animated you're... stuff, I didn't put this in here because I just I just saw it. Um, okay. So let me see if I can bring it up here. Uh, the Caped Crusader, which has not had a trailer yet. Has the trailer mm -hmm. even come out for it yet? I don't think so. That Bruce Tim. Uh, let me just see. I'm pretty sure uh, it popped up in my calendar for um, for a TV shows coming. Uh, Huh. Which I had not seen a any release date. Let's see where, where was that. So my calendar for TV shows that goes off of uh, TV IMDb says mm -hmm. all of all ten episodes of Batman: Cape Crusader is coming out July thirty first. Wow. Which is in you know five month and a half. Yeah, five weeks. So I don't know. I haven't seen anything about that. I haven't. There hasn't been a trailer. Don't know. Don't know what's gonna, if that's actually true or not. But it's plugged into the schedule. Is at the end of July. Interesting. Uh, okay. So that. Blue Beetle animated series in the works at DC Studios will serve as a follow up to the 2023 movie. Uh, mm -hmm. The movie you saw the movie, yes. Yeah, I saw it. It was alright. It was yeah, right. definitely better than I thought. Yeah. Yep. I. Was like, I. Was like, <laughs> um. No. Definitely better than I thought. What do you say? Six and a half, seven. You done? Yeah. Six. Six point eight. <laughs> okay. Uh, Deadline okay. reveals that Warner okay. Bros. Animation and DC Studios are plotting a new Blue Beetle animated TV series. It's reportedly already in development with Miguel Puga, the Cas Casa Grandes, said to have started work on the project earlier this year. They'll serve as showrunner while Christian Martinez. Writing the series, Angel Manuel Sota and Gareth Dunet Alcosser, director and screenwriter of the movie, respectively, are going to executive like, produce alongside John Ricker, Rickard, uh, Galen Vaisman, who is also an executive producer on Blue Beetles, overseeing the series. James Gunn has confirmed that there are plans for Zolo Marin Duenas, Jamie Reyes to Jamie Reyes in the new DCU, and that this sequel could potentially lead to a return to the big screen, say the trade sources. 
Uh, it's unclear whether that would be in another solo outing of the Blue Beetle. Uh, the movie only made $130 million on a reported $104 million budget. And a tough year for the DCU, it performed better than expected and has a solid 78% score on Rotten Tomatoes. Um, I'm, it's fine. I'd potentially watch yeah. a Blue Beetle animated series. Welcome I would to also Pluto TV. Well, getting started. Pluto TV. Hey, welcome. There you go. Come on down to Pluto TV. Okay, uh, James Gunn clarifies Ooh. planned Batman Superman age difference for the DCU. Yeah, well, uh, I yeah, we expected that to fucking huh to happen. We all expected that to happen to clarify the age. Yeah, well, no, like to to not clarify the age. Well, I thought it was just said that they were clarifying it was different. Yeah. Uh, okay, so uh, the premise of the movie, which for the Brave and the Bold, which reportedly featured Batman as a father operating with his son Damien as Robin, has led to some fans to assume that Bruce Wayne will be noticeably older than Clark Kent in the new DC universe. Gunn was recently quoted uh, as saying he planned to cast Batman who was slightly older than Superman, but denied having said it exactly that way. Uh, quote, I'm pretty sure I didn't say that. Uh, what I said was Bruce could be a couple of years older than Clark. All I meant was I, all I meant was I wasn't tied to Bruce and Clark being the exact same age. Uh, and the Superman, in Superman, the title character will played by David Cornsweet, who is 30. Gunn says mm-hmm. that casting for Batman hasn't even started yet, and obviously fans who don't really know how old Damian Wayne will be in the movie. While it makes right. the most sense to cast a teenager for the part, no, no way. You go, like, 10-year-old Damian Wayne. Like, the kid's super psychotic. He's been raised by Raza Ghoul. He, the Batman would be, going to say, 31, I want him to 32. Make him s- yeah, I want like, them to make him super nuts, but I don't think they're going to make him super nuts. I think they're going to make him, like, mildly... Well, they should. That's the only way to do Damien, Damien is he will kill. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. Like, um, like I think I think of uh, a good Damien would be Hit Girl from Kick-Ass. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, wow. And Bruce Wayne's got to wow. get, get that out of him, right? Cause, That's good. Yeah. That's a good, uh, good correlation. Damn. So, yeah, Batman could be, uh, like... 33 and Superman could be 30 and still have like, you know, he, a kid of eight to 10 years old. Yeah. Just a couple, I think just a couple of years older. Uh, nothing. Yeah. I don't, yeah. I don't want to see a 45 to 50 year old Bruce Wayne. Mm-hmm. Oh no. We already saw no. that with Ben Affleck. Uh, okay. Uh, mm-hmm. Peacemaker season two will feature a new opening dance number. We all love the Unreal. musicals. <laughs> Amazing. Amazing. Dude. Uh, it's not really, I guess, I mean, Sure. Uh, it's news, but not news. I just thought I'd put it in there because we all love the dance party. Okay, uh, last thing Feel is... Feel good, um, baby. For a while, Justice League movie uh, was going to be done by Will Beale, uh, and I thought I'd just go over the little uh, little tidbits here of what we were supposed to get in the movie. Uh, let me just okay. That up. Okay. okay. So, uh, there was a time when writer Will Beale was one of Hollywood's most sought-after writers. However, after the star-studded Gangster Squad failed to meet expectations... Oh, Oh, right. Uh, all that changed. Uh, Warner Brothers still turned to him for help with expanding the universe, though he's credited with working on both Aquaman and Zack Snyder's Stresses League. The reason Beale got a story by credit on that director's cut is because he was tasked with writing a, a vaguely similar Justice League, which, believe it or not, Ben Affleck was eyed to direct, uh, years being cast as Batman. Right. Uh, the project started to take shape in the early 2010s, was ultimately scrapped, and Warner Brothers put all its eggs in Zack Snyder's basket. In this feature, we take a look at what might have been delving into what we know about Beale's plans for the scrapped project. Okay, number 10. Uh, Batman and Superman are allies. <gasps> what? Uh, Superman is wow. dead when Snyder begins, but in Beale's version, the Man of Steel is good friends with Batman. They knew each other... Uh, they know each other's secret identities and meet in Metropolis, a Metropolis diner for a catch-up. Besties. Uh, before heading to Central City to recruit the Flash... There's a battle of LexCorp against KG Beast and Killer Croc to deal with. Lex Luthor is attempting to buy Kryptonite from the former, but they're all interrupted by the arrival of Dasad, one of Darkseid's most loyal followers. He kills okay. Croc, makes off with the Kryptonite. This action-packed, character-heavy opening doesn't even begin to scratch the surface of what's to come. However, Darkseid is the film's big bad. Steppenwolf doesn't get as much to do doesn't get as much to do in this Justice League. Darkseid is the lead baddie from the start. The film wastes no time introducing the ruler Apocalypse. 
with an early scene taking place on the villain's home planet. Snyder and Terrario clearly oh. have a different idea of how Dr. Snyder's big screen introduction could work. Uh, something that was evident oh. after he made only a cameo in the appa- cameo appearance in the Snyder Cut. The reason for that was he was supposed to take center stage in Justice League Part 2 uh, with Steppenwolf. This chapter is big. The first chapter is big bad. Uh, had Beale's script been used, Darkseid might have beaten Thanos to theaters while this film had Darkseid in spades. There's only one key member of the League who's said to be MIA. There's no Aquaman. Uh, Jason Momoa's Aquaman has been a Firm fan, a favorite. His solo film grossed over one billion globally. Even Aquaman: The Last King performed better than expected last December. Beale, however, had no intention of using the King of Atlantis. While there are a lot of other superheroes, just think it seems the writer couldn't quite figure out how to bring this divisive superhero to the screen. Remember when Beale was penning the screenplay? It was before DC Comics reinvented Arthur Curry with the new Fifty Two reboot. Uh, mm. Green Lantern and Hawkman team up. There's a huge cosmic element to Beale's Justice League screenplay with Green Lantern, John Stewart, and Hawkman teaming up in an outer space nightclub to start to stop Kanjar Rowe from helping Desaad weaponize the kryptonite he stole from Lex Luthor. We don't get a Hal Jordan mention in this, and this film is presumably set in a separate world from 2011's Green Lantern. While all this is happening, mm. there's a subplot about Amanda Waller and the Department of Metahuman, and the, and the Department of Metahuman. Interestingly, she has her own team made up of Tattooed Man, Copperhead Cheetah, Solomon Grundy, uh, and also on Earth, Superman is kidnapped by Steppenwolf and his pair of demons and taken back to Apocalypse. Ooh, interesting. Uh, number six, Massacre on Oa. Batman heads to Themyscira to seek Wonder Woman's help, and we learn that they have a romantic history. <gasps> John Stewart, meanwhile, returns to Earth and meets with Bruce, Diana, and the Flash in the Batcave. As the team formulates a plan to rescue Superman, Dawn heads back to Oa, only to find the planet decimated by Darkseid, uh, Katmatua, Kilowog, Guy Garner, Salak, and Tomar Ray are all dead. The sign Bia wasn't exactly thinking about the potential future in the DC Universe, for now anyway, with the no Green mm-hmm. Lantern Corps standing in the way, Darkseid heads to Earth. <clears throat> Batman v Superman. Uh, Superman has fallen under Darkseid's control, and a fight with Batman ensues. Like... In Batman v Superman, Dawn of Justice, and Frank Miller's The Dark Knight Returns, the Cape Crusader dons a special armor bat suit to take on Man of Steel in hand to hand combat. It's Wonder Woman who eventually figures out how to free Superman from Darkseid, and Hero quickly rejoins the League to repel the villain's invasion. However, things get a little strange at this point in Beale's Justice League film because Kal El finds himself thrust 11 years into the future after traveling through a boom tube. What? This has to be where Snyder and Terrio got the idea to tackle the nightmare uh, for future in their vision. Mm. Uh, Superman learns that Darkseid has wiped out 80% of the planet's population. Diana and Bruce are leading what's left of the human resistance. Batman is Wonder Woman's second in command, and they have a son, Clark Wayne. (laughs) Oh, man. Jesus. Uh, It seems Superman's disappearance through the boom tube left Earth defenseless, and even Lex Luthor is now aligned with the heroes of Batman's Berserkers. The team made up of Deathstroke, Captain Boomerang, Huntress, and Cheetah, essentially meaning the Dark Knight is the leader of the Suicide Squad. The survivors are based in Superman's Fortress of Solitude. Uh, we know Batman and Cyborg are responsible for sending Flash back in time in the Snyderverse, though those scenes were being saved for the sequel. So here's an initial trip through the Snyder Cut, uh, through time in the Snyder Cut. In Bill's film, it's Lex Luthor who figured out how to send Barry Allen 11 years in the past. The future Flash arrives on Earth prior to Darkseid's invasion and dies in his younger self, self's arms <laughs> shortly after warning the younger Barry about what's to come in t- what's to come for the League and after the hero accomplishes his mission by preparing his fellow heroes for what's to come the stage is set for an epic battle uh, Superman has already been taken to Apocalypse at this point so Batman, Wonder Woman, Flash and Green Lantern travel to the planet to stop Darkseid before he can brainwash their teammate Superman is rescued and heroes take on the villainous <laughs> forces Green Lantern core who are alive in this timeline soon arrive to help lend a helping hand as do the warriors of Thermoscara. As you might expect the heroes emerge victorious from the battle and stop the desolate future from ever becoming a reality. Uh, Darkseid may be defeated but there's another foe waiting in the wings. Lex Luthor is planning to run for president. A nice hit hint at how his story played out in the comics. However there's one final surprise set to the stage for an early iteration of Man of Steel. Lex receives a message from his future self learning that Superman is in Fact, Clark Kent. Bill's screenplay doesn't reveal what villain what the villain does with the information, but there are plenty of ways that could have been addressed. That's cool. 
Yeah, so there are a lot of things that I like in this treatment. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of cool stuff. Not sure. I'm not sure I love the time travel aspect of it. Yeah, it's a lot. It's a lot of one movie. Yeah, it is a lot to fit in one movie, definitely. Yeah. Um, yeah. But Dark Side being the bad guy, Batman and Superman are friends. Yeah. Um, that generalness is nice. Green Lantern Hawkman would be fun. Uh, his ability, he, him not being afraid to kill uh, heroes is fun. Mm -hmm. Um. Yeah, the, I think of well, I mean, at that point, if they'd been made, I suppose we wouldn't have had had a ton of time travel superhero movies already, so maybe it would have felt different. Like we hadn't had Endgame, we hadn't had Multiverse of Madness, we hadn't had, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Yes. Or the Flash, Ooh, mm -hmm. which also had fucking time travel. So, um, yeah, I probably think this would have been better <laughs> than what we got. No Probably. mention of Martian Manhunter, but... No. Yeah. Uh, so what is this... Does this guy ever actually work again? I don't know. It's a great question. Will... Wait. So... Oh, he wrote the new Bad Boys. Oh! Uh, huh? Deputy... It made a lot of money, so yeah. congratulations. We did the Training Day TV series. Mm. Some episodes I heard it was of, okay. Some episodes of Castle. So he definitely mm. worked... <laughs> it took him four years to get a writing job again after Gangster Squad. And then he did the screenplay story of Aquaman. And then he did one season of Deputy... With uh, Stephen Dorff. <clears throat> well, maybe. No! He's doing. A... I saw it. I can <laughs> see it. He's doing The Legend of Conan? Oh, Lord. Uh oh. Oh, yeah, IMDb doesn't like you let you do that anymore. Um, it better be good. It better be rated R. <laughs> Oh Lord! Anyways. Well, let's hope. One could hope. Is there anything you uh, you liked and uh, didn't like in this uh, treatment? Um, yeah, the time travel stuff was a bit much. Um, I think they maybe went a little too cosmic. Um, it really sounded like it was like half and half, like half Earth, half cosmic. Right. Because uh, of all time frame. massacre and then they yeah, take it, so I take Superman back to apocalypse. Yeah, I feel like they probably could have reduced that a little bit and made it like. Ha having him jump 11 years into the future and then dealing with that and then fucking hopping back and like, <sighs> the kid it's just like Jesus Christ Flash just... dying in his own arms <laughs> <clears throat> yeah like cut you know half of that out and just do one jump you know what I mean one jump and then maybe a jump back call it a day real quick <sighs> exhausting yeah anyways uh, well that's what let's never get it on screen I guess that's true I don't know, maybe James Gunn will take elements from it uh, in his Justice League eventually. <laughs> I that mean, Batman and Superman have to, be, years? have to be friends uh, eventually. Like, they gotta do but the other, thing, the other thing, too, is that we they, they, he can't wait that long. You know, I'm thinking about to it. I'm like, these friends? movies come out. <sighs> no, 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 to like make a Justice League movie or to do oh. whatever. Like, to have those people come back. You know what I mean? Like, if you... So, let's be real, right? Superman movie in 2025... Brave and the Bold yeah. in 2026. Then we're going to see them together, what, in 2028, maybe? So here's all the things for chapter one. So I would expect... I would expect Justice League to be right after these four, five. I don't know that you need to say Teen Titans. Yeah, I don't know that you need Teen Titans to be in it, but like I don't, I don't think those four. I would expect so chapter starting chapter two would be the first Justice League movie. Whether that's them getting Justice League together or that it already exists at the end of whatever okay. other movie. I like that. Then, I like that. Maybe that's his. Maybe that's his idea. 
You know what I mean? If he's doing it in like five year, like a five year span or whatever, chapter yeah. one is <clears throat> five years, get... chapter two's. So we get Justice League in 2029, 2030 as chapter two. And that should be about halfway of his 10 year plan, right? I'm going to say 2029. Okay. Well, we'll mark this in the calendar. <laughs> Whew, I, well, yeah, when uh, this this is this podcast has gone global, <laughs> it's, uh, oh, yeah. it's syndicated. Yeah, yeah, yeah. On CNN. Jesus. Uh, okay. Uh, it's my Josh and Sal <laughs> Comics. DC News of the Week. Uh, we'll be back next week. Thanks. Thank you.